Homopolar motors are the simplest of all electric motors. While their low torque and low efficiency make them poor choices for actual use, their adaptability and ease of construction make them perfect for technology demonstrations and science projects. This video will explain how they work and everything you need to know about constructing any of a number of different types of motors as well as techniques for overcoming many of the problems these unique devices can have. A homopolar motor is a motor where the current always flows in the same direction as opposed to a normal uh, electric motor in which the current uh, periodically reverses or is commutated during every revolution. When the armature is placed on top of the battery, current flows out of the top, down the sides, into the magnets, and back into the battery completing the circuit. The force that causes the armature to spin is called the Lorentz force, which states that any time you have a current flowing perpendicular to a magnetic field, you get a force perpendicular to both pushing it away. The common rule for determining the direction of the force is called the right hand rule. Now I know labeling my fingers like this looks a little silly, but it makes things as clear as possible. You point your index finger or pointer finger in the direction of current flow. Your middle finger points in the direction of the magnetic field where up in this case is towards the magnetic north of the magnets and your thumb will point in the direction of the force. So, if the theory is correct, then when I place the armature on the uh, battery magnet set, it should rotate this way. And it does. About now, some of you are questioning a problem with this idea. And that is, we all know that electrons flow out of the negative end of the battery, not the positive end. Well, what's going on? The reason we use positive current flow is that because several hundred years ago, Benjamin Franklin made a big mistake. He thought that the particles moving, the electricity moving, was based on positive particles. We later found out that it was the opposite that was true. It was electrons with a negative charge that were moving. But by that time, all of the physics books have been written, and it had become so uh, dogmatically instilled in uh, the culture of physics that even though positive current flow isn't the reality, they kept the rule. I personally think that there's another prejudicial effect in, uh, in order here because it's a right-hand rule and most of the people in the world are right-handed. And that's how they work. The same principles can be used to explain how the bouncing homopolar motor and the electric train works, but they're a little easier to understand in terms of similar magnetic fields repelling each other. In most homopolar motors, the batteries and magnets are held steady while the wire rotates around them. In the homopolar train, the wire in the form of a tightly wound co uh, coil is fixed and the battery and magnets move through it. How it works is that electricity from the battery flows through the magnets into the coil, down the coil, and to the back of the battery. This section of the coil which is carrying the current creates a magnetic field. These magnets are set up so that they're opposing each other. In other words, this is the south end and this is the south end. This is the north end, this is the north end. And what happens is that uh, when the battery's polarity is correct, this magnet is repelled by the field inside the coil and this one is attracted to it. So it moves along by being pushed forward or, or repelled by the front magnets and attracted or pulled by the rear magnets. The bouncing homopolar motor works on the same principle. 
the coil at the bottom makes contact with the magnets, completes the electric circuit, current flows through the coil, creates a magnetic field which opposes the uh, magnetic field of the magnets, is pushed up, the circuit is broken, the magnetic field collapses, and the coil stretches out again, makes contact, and is once again repelled. This is repeated as often as 100 times per minute. Because these motors run on a dead short situation, uh, they go through batteries very quickly. I ran the following tests on the electric train to see which battery brand and type lasted the longest. While this isn't exactly the same as for a homopolar motor, these should give an indication of which batteries provide the longest run time for the least amount of money. Lightly tapping a dimple into the top electrode will keep the armature centered so it doesn't fall off like this. Adjusting the tension of the contacts to get a homopolar motor running can be an exercise in frustration. A little too hard, there's too much drag, it doesn't go. Too little pressure and uh, you won't have good contact and won't run. If after fighting for a while and not being able to get it to run, try this. Instead of forcing it to run on the um, dimple you created in the top electrode, move it off to the side. And many times that slight change in angle will give you just the contact you need for it to run smoothly. The wire used to create the armature needs to be stiff enough so that it holds its shape as the RPMs build up. For compact designs like this, 18 gauge copper wire works well. Larger armatures like this one work better if you drop down to a 16 or even a 14 gauge, which is quite a bit thicker and more stable. Using a stack of magnets like this creates grooves in which the armature wires can rub and because the drag is increased, may actually stop it from working. A better solution is to use a single monolithic magnet such as this. When selecting your magnets, it's helpful to get the highest N rating possible. Super magnets are rated according to their N strength, which is related to pulse strength or magnetic field strength. Uh, usually they start at around N35 and go up to as high as N52. Try to use the highest N rating possible. Because neodymium magnets are so powerful, they have three really big problems. First, they are powerful. I have seen them pull other magnets and pieces of metal uh, through the air as far away as 12 inches. Uh, they can cause uh, painful uh, pinches, and worse still, because they're brittle, they can break. Also, they're very fast. You can be bringing two together, and quicker than your muscles can react, they can grab each other and slip out of your hands to slam together. So treat them with respect. Straight-sided armatures like this one, with the vertical arms as close to the battery as possible, are the easiest to make and get aligned, and they also run the fastest. Bending the bottom contacts to fit the contour of the magnets will help keep the armature running true. Twisting the side arms in a spiral like this makes for a much more entertaining display, but it also makes the contact at the bottom a little trickier to uh, set up so that it runs smoothly. Because of this, these tend to run a little slower. The top wire has to be carefully centered on the coil and should be cut at an angle to create a sharp point, otherwise it may walk out of the dimple. Larger motors such as this benefit from using a ruler or even a drawn design to keep their shape as symmetric as possible. If not, as they build up speed, imbalances in the weight can cause them to fall off the battery. I had a lot of trouble getting this heart-shaped armature to work well because I couldn't get the balance set so that the bottom of the armature pressed against the magnets hard enough to create a good contact. I expected similar difficulties with this non-symmetric design, but actually it worked much better. In most homopolar motors, the magnets and battery are held steady while the armature moves. 
In this one, the magnet is allowed to spin and the armature is locked in place. The magnets on the bottom of the base pull down on the rotating magnet and keep it centered and stable. Moving the base magnets will cause the rotating magnet to tilt, allowing it to be adjusted for optimum contact with the armature. Motors such as these can reach thousands of RPM and if you're using a heavy magnet can actually be quite dangerous because eventually they'll become unstable and the magnet will be flung away at high speed. The most interesting homopolar motor has to be the rolling battery version. Current passing through the aluminum foil creates the force that pushes the battery along. The principle is the same as rail guns which are being developed for military application. If one magnet is larger than the other the battery will travel in a circle. And that's about all there is to know about homopolar motors. Thank you for watching this video.